The Republic of Haiti is one of the most economically deprived countries in all of the Caribbean, with a deteriorating infrastructure, corrupt bureaucracy, and a history of coups. You have doubtlessly heard various news reports and other such things about poor conditions in Haiti. We, the Hope of Haiti, would like to assure you that these conditions are in no way exaggerated and that the people of Haiti truly require whatever aid can be given. Remember that, in doing your part, you contribute to their salvation. If you do not do your part, you contribute to their suffering. For goodness sake, do your part. Help these people. Make a donation. The story of Haiti is quite unique. It is a country whose population was created by the kidnapping and enslavement of hundreds of thousands of Africans from Spain and France in the 17th and 18th centuries. The descendants of these slaves are the people of Haiti today. There has been virtually no voluntary immigration. This is a land of great misery and poverty, populated by the people of amazing strength and spirit, a spirit that inspires and astounds those who have experienced their gentle nature. Various native groups of the Caribbean inhabited the island of Hispaniola for centuries prior to its discovery by Columbus in 1492. It is here, on the island that would later become known as the Dominican Republic in Haiti, that he first landed. The native population was soon entirely destroyed by European disease, prompting the Europeans to import slaves from Africa for a workforce. Hispaniola was an island of rainforests and plains requiring thousands of slaves to work sugarcane plantations and other farming industries. The forests were gradually eliminated over the years by lumbering, thus exposing the mountainsides to irreversible erosion. Today, Haiti is environmentally devastated, its remaining scrub forests being consumed for cooking fuel and its fisheries non-existent. Spain and France divided Hispaniola in the early 1700s. The western third became Haiti, ruled by the French. Enslavement of Africans continued until history took a turn and the slaves revolted in 1804, creating the first black republic. Unfortunately for the Haitians, their dominant neighbor, the United States, still condoned slavery. Haitian freedom could not be recognized in their area and they were isolated from partnership in world affairs. Due to various economic and political problems, the dream of a republic did not last very long in Haiti, resulting in northern and southern Haiti developing as two separate entities, ruled by their own all-powerful emperors. For the past 200 years, foreign commercial interests have continued to control Haiti's economy, creating a small dominant upper class and a vast peasantry. Haiti exists as a single political entity today, having experienced dozens of leaders and dictators, each one replaced by their own coup d'etat. During its own indulgence in imperialism, the United States occupied Haiti from 1915 to 1934 in the entrance of creating commercial control, killing thousands of inhabitants in the process. Haiti today has no significant health care for its poor, as almost all is derived from foreign relief efforts. Food is largely imported, donated by the UN and other foreign philanthropists because virtually no infrastructure or industry exists in Haiti. In early 2004, another uprising of discontent occurred which ousted President Aristide to be replaced by yet another government. At the moment, things are peaceful, but at least 75% of Haiti's people remain unemployed and continue to live in the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. Haiti is now considered to be one of the least developing of all the third world countries. As you know, the people of Haiti in 2008 endured a devastating earthquake, striking the nation's own capital, Port-du-Prince, and demolishing its already deteriorating infrastructure and other such things of importance. This earthquake killed an estimated 300,000 Port-au-Prince citizens and demolished more than 300,000 buildings. This earthquake has crippled the already broken Haitian economy and left the people of Haiti worse off than they were before. The earthquake initially caused destruction through damage caused to buildings in Port-au-Prince and the immediate effects are seen through those who were crushed by these buildings. But even greater problems, more dangerous to the population, were yet to come. Cholera had already been a problem for the people of Port-au-Prince due to a lack of proper sanitation and water processing, a problem common to many less developed cities. But these problems were greatly exacerbated upon after the earthquake, with much of Port-au-Prince's sewage and water treatment facilities damaged or destroyed by the earthquake. 
Residents must drink the water that's not properly treated and then may contain cholera and various other waterborne diseases. This has resulted in even greater outbreaks of cholera in Porto Prince. Due to the sheer amount of houses destroyed by the earthquake, thousands of Porto Prince residents were displaced from their homes and into refugee centers within the cities, which can be referred to as tent cities. Conditions in these tent cities are extremely poor, with dense living conditions created by the amount of people displaced, causing disease to spread very rapidly among the refugees. Conditions for earthquake survivors in Porto Prince are ludicrously poor, conditions that you could not even begin to comprehend in your fancy country. The people affected by the earthquake needed the more assistance than the Haitian government could supply, requiring the service of international relief organizations such as the Red Cross and the Salvation Army to deal with these refugees and help them not die. But even now, thousands still live in refugee camps within Porto Prince virtually relying entirely off of the assistance provided by foreign relief efforts. How do you think these relief organizations continue to function and are able to help those in need within the refugee camps of Port-au-Prince? It's not magic. It's you. How, you say, are I what continues to allow these relief organizations to function? Well, friend, it is because you can donate to the hope of for Haiti or, and other organizations like us, ensuring that your money goes to help those in need in Haiti and not to those in need anywhere else. Thank you. comes a time when we hit a certain call when the world must come together as one there are people dying oh, when it's time to lend a hand to life 